the family are living in Tibet or not. But now um, there are a huge number of Tibetans who came from Tibet recently, since 1980s, 1990s, and right up to, up to the protests. So there are hundreds and thousands of Tibetans who are talking, uh, uh, having this strong relationship with Tibetans inside and outside. And relationship doesn't really depend on whether they have a cell phone or an internet connection. Uh, much of the relationship depends on how much strongly you feel in the heart. And therefore, a, an immediate connection. So there is, is there relationship? There is. But then, um, you know, the question about, uh, uh, a question that, that, that the blame that China raised definitely is completely uh, baseless. Uh, you know, how can somebody from outside, you know, inside that kind of thing. This is completely, uh, you know, undermining the wishes of the Tibetans inside Tibet. And, and um, this is one reason why His Holiness called this special meeting. His Holiness said, you know, if the protests were happening from one place or, uh, or a few hundred people, he would understand that the Chinese clamped it down. But when Tibetans all over Tibet protested, when so many people, uh, not just protests or sloganeering, when they were, they were dying and when they, were, when they knew they were going to be shot to dead in the street, they came out. Such sacrifice of people for freedom, completely nullified, ignored, by Chinese government, instead use violence to clamp it down. And His Holiness said that Chinese government did not listen to uh, the demand of the protests. You know, wherever it happened, if there is a protest, people at least come down to listen to them. And here people were dying, and thousands of people are still in prison now. And some of them are now being sentenced to eight, nine, 10, 12 years of imprisonment. And Chinese government did not listen to any of those and instead uh, started to abuse His Holiness. So therefore His Holiness says, now I, I cannot do anything. Uh, you know, the Chinese government is not truthful. They are not uh, really responding. So His Holiness says, I have no, nothing to do, I'm helpless. I w he said, I want you, the Tibetan people, to meet and discuss and you tell me what to do. So we had this meeting and this is the result and uh, we will see how it will move forward. What was the first question? <laughs> China. Development in China, intellectuals. Uh, yes, okay. yeah, again, um, f um, for a very long time I used to believe and this used to be my only consolation that some people, young activists, writers, poets, cartoonists, uh, painters, filmmakers, um, cyber activists, they are working in China and they are running what is called a parallel but underground movement to bring freedom in China. And I recognize them as truly patriotic Chinese. Because they love their country, they want freedom in their country, they love and value their own culture, their their nationality, the uniqueness of Chinese religion and culture and everything. They know this and they love this and they want it to survive and not to get uh, sold out along with, Hu, along with Hu Jintao's business. So I recognize them as the truly patriotic Chinese. So they are working. You know, they are working among themselves, a huge network. Uh, but I think... Um, the, uh, the government's control. You know, I think Chinese government has so much to learn from all different uh, mechanisms of control that had uh, passed earlier, from the Soviet Union, from the communist regimes, uh, from Pol Pot and from uh, Chile, uh, General Pinochet. Chinese government has taken uh, the best mechanism of control from everybody. And today there are, there are their mechanism of control is so sophisticated that they continue to present the best smile ever and, and yet maintain a tight control down there. And you know, look at Beijing 2000 Olympics, the best organized show in the history of the world.
some of the um, what um, uh, underwears that, that people were wearing when they were show, they were doing the shows for 16 hours, uh, even that was not seen by other people uh, when they were peeing in the underwears. Um, you know that kind of that kind of organization they can do because they have they have all these precedents and they have the example of Soviet Union right in front of them and they don't want to be you know uh, broken apart just like Soviet Union and and um, maybe sadly because uh, there is no government shop in in China um, obviously there is somebody like that uh, so so in this tightly controlled totalitarian regime. Um, it becomes much more challenging for these young people, young activists. Um, but I think the harsher, the stronger the uh, control is, um, the more creative people become. It's like the cat and the mouse. Uh, however uh, sharp the claws of the cats, uh, the mice, the, all, the, all these... Uh, a mouse, the rats, all of them have a sharper brain, a more creative ways of getting away. And therefore, mouse continue to live even today. Uh, so therefore, I, I have this, this is my only um, hope in China, that China will be free one day. There will be more freedom.